Sylvester Turner, Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner, uh, is holding a news conference right now. He is speaking. Let's go to him and listen in and hear what he has to say. To have people out of the out of the shelters and into some sort of housing um, soon. Uh, what I told my executive committee, I just don't want. I, I would not like to have anybody in um, in shelters uh, past the next few days. As far as you're concerned, I'm just just wondering, um, just double checking. There's not real active. Flooding in the city today, right? It's all in the county, as far as you guys have seen. My understanding is that, well, Kingwood. Okay. Yeah, we're watching. I'm watching Kingwood very, very carefully, and I'm working uh, very closely with Councilmember Dave Martin. So we're watching that situation, uh, and again, a lot will depend on on the rainfall that takes place. Uh, but in terms of the release of water to the Gulf. Uh, we're releasing more than's coming into that area right now. If that stays the same, I think we'll be okay. But that situation has to be monitored uh, very, very uh, closely. Mayor, you mentioned uh, detention a second ago. As you look forward on flooding mitigation, from what you know so far, does it seem more like you need to focus on changing the way the city invests its money in that area, <coughs> such as detention, or does it have more to do with changing the city's rules for development on the front end? You know, I think, Mike, I think the approach has to be much more comprehensive and, and holistic. I don't think there's any one, one thing, and I think that's why it's important uh, to, to name someone whose sole purpose will be to focus just on flooding, where well, you can look out, out at all aspects. I would, I would say I, I, I um, uh, anticipate that that person will also be working with, an, with a task force. Um, that we'll put together uh, and that we'll be working with this particular person as well. And that task force, uh, persons on that will, will be, you know, other engineers from our, even from outside the city of Houston. Uh, and let me just say, you know, there have been a number of people who have stepped up already, um, uh, key players and uh, engineers in our city who have even asked to be a part of, of that task force. Um, so I think everything needs to be on, on, on the table um, because, you know, what you do in one area impacts another. What happens on one part of town impacts people down below. Uh, what happens on the, on, the, on the north end, just like in, with Tour 17, can impact people on the south end. So there are so many different components that you almost have to bring everyone to the table. But what I have discovered since I've been here, and I think what will work best for the people in the city of Houston in the region, is that that person needs to come from out of public works Okay, and it needs to be a standalone uh, individual whose sole purpose will not be on, you know, pre pre uh, preparing potholes or uh, panel replacements or just permitting, but whose sole focus will be on flooding, and uh, and that's what I intend to do. So, Mayor, there was a, uh, obviously voters uh, a couple of years ago passed, I believe, it was a 140 million dollar bond issue regarding parks. Um, I'll wait for your press person to talk to you there. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and what I'm being told, that's, a, that's an active um, um, removal. removal right now, for example, for people in that Kingwood area. Uh, I think Forest Cove, Kingwood area. Uh, they don't have water in their homes. But I think they may be anticipating that that water may be moving in that direction, and so that's taking place right now. So we we are very carefully. I mean, we're monitoring that that Kingwood area very very closely. Voluntary evacuation is that what is yes, that the, that's okay. Voluntary. Okay. Voluntary. Yes, sir. I, I was about to ask you about the uh, a couple of years ago the voters passed it. It was a 166 million dollar parks bond issue. Are are you thinking <laughs> green space? Would that uh, somehow help out on this? Is there? Uh, uh, green space always helps, you know, and, and, and I'm a strong proponent of more green space and, and parks within our city. So that's, you know, that helps. You know, the more cement, of course, you have on the ground, the faster water will run. Um, but I just think we need to take a very holistic approach. I mean, I don't think any of us can lose sight that, that what happened on Monday was of a historic nature. I don't think we can, we can lose sight of that. Uh, that was a lot of rain that came down, and the water is still falling. Um, so we just have to continue to work through it. Uh, but what's important to, to people who have already been adversely impacted is getting them back on the road to recovery. And when people, when people have been, this is their second time on more flooding, and for some people who just did, went through Memorial Day flood and they had their house repaired, 
and they, they stayed out of it, and then all of a sudden, here we go again. Uh, you can only imagine what's, what's going through their minds and how they feel, you know, and, and, um, and I'm, very, I'm very sensitive to that. Mayor, one of our reporters, um, when he went to Greens Point Mall on Monday, he saw several firefighters just hanging out kind of for a long time. Instead of helping, I was wondering if you know anything about maybe a lack of coordinate, coordination that happened there. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm very, I'm very proud of every one of those firefighters that were, that were out there. Uh, I went out there personally myself. There were there were police officers and firefighters who had been out there since 4 a.m. in the morning. Okay, and they had they had they had, they had safely removed people uh, from three of the apartment complexes. Um, and they were still out there working to, to assist others. And these are, are all individuals who left, who left their own families. So I'm, I'm, very, I'm very proud of the first responders. I'm very proud of that. Um, you know, you, you don't want anybody to be stranded. Absolutely not. And, and again, when people are in crisis, I certainly understand their concern. They want to, they want to be put in a safe environment. So I got that. So I'm not, I'm not going to even, I'm not, gonna, I'm not even, um, disagreeing or upset when anyone who feels as though people we didn't get to them early enough because I wasn't in their shoes and I understand that uh, I'm just glad that they're safe <clears throat> and quite frankly if they're if they're able to say we didn't get to them fast enough and and and, and I'm glad that they're safe enough to be able to say that today okay because the because the, the opposite side could have been, the flip side of that could be something else. How do you feel, how do you feel about the cooperation between the city with the other cities around here and the county? The, the county and the city worked very well together. I mean, County Judge Ed, Emin and I were talking every morning at about 6, six o'clock in the morning, if not, if not sooner. Um, and he and I text each other back and forth. Um, but the cooperation with, between the city and the county couldn't be better. Uh, um, the commissioners have been outstanding in terms of their work and, and their assistance. Um, so the relationship between the county and the city uh, is great and um, no criticism at all. Mayor, I, I have a, do you have a follow-up? Uh, no. Okay, I, I, I have two non-flooding questions if, if anybody was... I do have a flooding question. Go for it. Um, uh, I talked to some people that told me that um, their cars were towed after they, they tried to save them from being flooded because, as you know, a lot of cars were flooded and they put them up on, uh, you know, on a highway, on an elevated area, and, and they were towed. And they were wondering if there's any way to get their towing fee way, uh, towing fee way. This, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, let, me, let me take a look at it. Again, I, I hope no one... No, no one has been has taken advantage of. I don't, I don't want that to happen. Uh, but these are private. These are private companies, private businesses. But you know, we'll certainly we'll certainly take a look at it. Um, I, I don't know if there's any. If nothing. There's really nothing. It's a it's a private contract. I mean, these are private tow companies. Um, we can ask and certainly reach out to them, but we have no way to force them to, to free tow. Uh, you know, I, I can only hope that and ask that uh, people recognize that uh, people abandon their cars not because they wanted to, but because they were trying to seek a, a, a safe venue. And hopefully that the people's vehicles will not uh, now be towed and then charge $240 or whatever that amount may be. I hope people will just be sensitive. Um, the corporate, the business community uh, has stepped up in a, in a major, major way, so I'm very, I'm very appreciative to, to their uh, contributions, just like, you know, waste manager off the bat, $50,000 uh, for, these, for these dumpsters. Um, um, and, and, and it's an addition to the storm relief fund. That's to the storm relief fund. Oh, to the storm relief fund. Yes, oh, okay. So they provided over the equivalent of over 100 dumpsters and then another $50,000 to the storm relief fund. So um, we, we, we'll take a look into it. Mayor, could you explain just a little bit more about the, the uh, storm relief fund? in detail essentially i mean there there are a lot of there are a lot of needs that are out there i mean can you imagine you, know, you can provide a you can provide a place for people to live but if they lost everything and they were living from paycheck to paycheck you know they still need a mattress or they may need clothing um i saw some for example at the shelter they they left and um had children children didn't even have on shoes 
you know. So there, there are many other needs out there. Um, just, just giving a person a place to stay, and if they don't have anything else, you know, they, so where are they? Um, some people, there may not be a place for them to, uh, a housing unit. Uh, they possibly may need to go to, to some hotel in the short term. I mean, there are a number of different needs that are out there, and I think this, this helps with kind of getting people back on their own, own, own track. What more can um, people do who want to help? People are giving, people are giving water. I think there are four identify, identifiable drop stations. I don't have the locations right in front of me, but there are four identifiable lot, uh, drop stations. Non-perishable items, toiletries, um, pampers, um, clothes for, for, for children as well as adults. Um, all of those type of items are, uh, are beneficial. Non-perishable uh, food items, um, but again, if, you, if you're being placed in a, unit, in, a, in a unit and you don't have the ability to something to eat with, I mean, and utensils, all those things uh, people are in need of. All of the essentials, just think, just put yourself in the position of being, uh, being out of your home and you don't, you don't have, you know, anything else and what you would need in order to get yourself back on track, okay? And, 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 and again, and many of these individuals, they're not, they're just not asking for a handout. I mean, they're just wanting the assistance to get back. They, and we want to treat everyone uh, with dignity and respect, okay? Mayor, on um, the uh, budget question, <laughs> yes. um, what contributed to the decision in, in the proposal that you talked about on Friday to eliminate the solid waste sponsorship um, ag agreements or, or that permit? A budgetary shortfall of $160 million in trying to, to balance the budget. Uh, this was something that was, think, was put in place in the, in the 70s, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, for let's say for certain uh, uh, neighborhoods who may not have wanted the city's pickup, and they wanted their trash to be picked up, let's say twice a month, and they wanted it from the back door. So this was like a sponsorship. I think on average we're paying people like six dollars a month uh, for it. It's a sponsorship, and I've said to everyone, to city council members, to um, to TERS, uh, to employee groups, shared sacrifice. This is a part of the shared sacrifice. Were it not for the $160 million shortfall, I would not, be, I would not have put it on the table. And the council members who represent the areas where most of those agreements are in place are concerned that um, the city may actually wind up costing itself more because neighborhood groups may elect to cancel their contracts with the private vendor and, and that would force the city to come pick up the trash. Um, are, are you concerned that, that the cost could ultimately go up as a result of that? Well, we can, we, can, we can have that conversation, but, um, you know, some, some of the areas that are getting the sponsorship, they just take a look at some of the areas that are getting the sponsorship. I mean, could you elaborate <laughs> on that a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, Mike, I, let's put it this way. If anybody's service would be hurt by not getting that $6 a month, then I will, rem I will myself remove it a as an item and we'll find some other place to find the money. You know, if, any, if, if any neighborhood, for example, that's getting it, if they, if they are saying to me, if city council members are saying to me, uh, but for this $6 that, that they can't make it, I, I got that and I understand it. I don't want their, I don't want their sacrifice to be greater uh, if it doesn't have to be. So I don't want them to be put in a very stressful situation. My, my question was actually more on the, on the city side. If, if, a, if an HOA, uh, because they're not getting the payment anymore, says, right. well, we just won't hire this private company, mm -hmm. we'll cancel that, and then the city will come pick up our trash, and the city will have to, have to pay more to come pick up their trash. If, if, they, if, if, if they end up uh, saying that to me, Mike, and saying that this is that big of a difference, that they will give up their contract and will turn to the city, then yeah, okay, I'll, more than likely I'll remove it. I'm not trying to make their situation bad. I'm simply trying to balance a budget that's $160 million short, and I've asked people to engage in shared sacrifice. And quite frankly, when I drill down every de in every department and every line item, and I saw that item sticking out, out my question was, you know, is this one that's, that, 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 that people can give up without hurting without hurting them and the core services on things that are essential to the city. 
and I decided that this was something that the city, at this particular point in time, was not in a position to continue to sponsor. It's, 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 a, it's at a cost of $3.5 million. But if, if, there, if there are neighborhoods that are receiving it, and if they are saying to me, it is so important that if you if said if you take it away, then yeah, we, we're going to turn to your city service and end up costing us more, absolutely, then I will drop it and we'll find some other place to get the money. I'm not trying to be burdensome or trying to be hurtful, but when, you, when you're dealing with um, $100 million, $160 million shortfall, you have to balance your cost. And I took a look at it and I thought this was one that would be the, li the least stressful on, on, the, on the people that will not be receiving the sponsorship as well as the overall Houston, Houston community. And that's how I made that decision. Um, but if, there's, if, if people want to push back on it uh, and, and say, uh, Mayor, uh, we can't afford not getting that for this particular neighborhood, uh, then fine. Then I, I myself will, will, pull it, will, pull, will pull it down. But we'll take a look at those who are getting it. Did I, did I cover everything? I want to make sure I covered everything. Did I cover everything? Uh, you better leave before you think so, oh, Mr. Mayor. Oh, we all... <laughs> it's Doug's last council meeting. Oh, I mean, one last thing. I want to make sure. Have I covered everything? Uh, all the questions I answered? Do we have any idea how many people... I knew I should ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one more. Do we have any idea how many people in total were, were affected in, uh, in Greens Point and in the other areas? And I, yeah, those numbers. We're still looking at those numbers. That's, yeah, we're still making those assessments. Even done is out today in other areas. We're still making that assessment. So I, I really don't know the answer to that. Okay. Have I answered everybody's question to your full satisfaction? And, and are we all good? We all happy? You know? Okay, having said all of that, Doug, this is your, this is, this is your last day covering uh, City Hall and, uh, and, and the news in the city of Houston. And so, uh, look, on behalf of the entire city of Houston, and as mayor and CEO of the city of Houston, let me you've been listening you to Houston your... Mayor Sylvester Turner update the situation on this historic flooding in our area. He